Good evening and welcome to the November 19th, 2012 meeting of the BOHS District 6 Board. And uh, I, I just want to start off by thanking the other board members and administrators who have been quite busy over the last few days with uh, budget meetings. We appreciate this time of year. It gets, gets pretty busy and we're uh, together quite a bit. So uh, we'll try to move briskly, do what we need to do, but move briskly knowing that there are yet more meetings this week for most of us to attend. Um, so, uh, we'll, I don't, there are no uh, visitors or guests, I guess. We'll start off with a clerk's report. And uh, first piece of business is approving the minutes of November 5th, 2012. So moved. Second. Moved by Ricky, seconded by Ruth. Are there any uh, additions, deletions, corrections to those minutes? If not, all in favor of approving the minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Or abstentions? Uh, that would be the two of them. Russ and Lori, we're not there. So we're staying. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next is communications, and we have a communication. Uh, yes, I just returned from a special town meeting in the town of Guilford, and the question that was being asked was, um, should we have an Australian ballot issue in March of 2013 to decide whether the uh, middle school students at Guilford should come to BAMS or should they stay in Guilford? So the question was just on the Australian ballot issue. And after some discussion, um, the, the, so the question was, if you voted yes, then you were in favor of Australian ballot. If you voted no, you were in favor of presumably having a floor discussion and vote to answer the question whether the students would come to Bams. So after some discussion, it was 26 in the affirmative that they would like an Australian ballot and 28 no's, which would mean that we would have the discussion from the floor and the vote would be from the floor at the regular town meeting time. Um, there is no obligation by the school board to bring that vote to the people, but I think that it will be. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that the question will arise. Um, so in light of that, um, I think something that would be good for, I don't know how much it would involve this board, but maybe the central office, if we could come up with some uh, you know, a really realistic estimate of the cost to the town of Guilford to tuition their students to BAMS. I think it would very much, um, it would really help in the decision-making process. So it's going to be, you know, it's, it's a heartfelt uh, decision by the town. And I think the more information everybody has, the smoother the decision will be able to be made. Thank you. Pretty close to vision, 28 Very 26. Yeah. And it might be indicative of the feeling of the town. I really don't have any idea. So. Thank you. This looks any other communications? Just a bit. Anything else for the clerk's report? OK. Uh, we move on. Consent agenda. Is there a motion to go into consent agenda? So moved. Lori? Second. Ricky? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed or abstain? None. We are in consent and we'll start with finance. Okay. Finance met on the 7th of November at 7 a.m. and we approved warrants numbers 1072, 
74, 79, and 81, 82, and 84 for, <coughs> excuse me, a total of $1,376,966.29. We also approved payrolls, um, payroll of October 5th, and the amount of $526,350.73. And October 19th, and the amount of $495,000. $891.76. So, Ruth, would you, what was the October 5th again? Those are not the ones. Anywhere. They're not the ones you have? <laughs> I'm sorry. They're September and on the agenda. Oh, dear. <laughs> but I didn't get the total for October um, 5th. October 5th is five hundred and twenty six thousand three hundred and fifty dollars and seventy three cents so i wonder if that's a repeat on the agenda or if those september ones have yet to be reported out on the agenda um no i'll look and see um okay i'm sure i've got them in here Normally, the payrolls are a bit behind in terms of when we actually approve them at finance. Well, yeah, we approved them the, the 7th of November, and they were, well, one of them was a month previous, and the other one was about two weeks previous. On our, on our last, on our minutes from our last meeting, there's nothing related to payrolls. So for a while. So yep. we. So these must be September ones that we didn't. Well, approve. I have them down for the October fifteenth meeting, on um, payroll dates of September seventh and September twenty first. And those are the same numbers we have on the agenda. Okay. Yeah. So that's what she did. She put the September ones in yep. instead of the October ones. Oh, so we've. Done these. We've done the okay. ones that are on the agenda, tonight's agenda. Okay. So I presume we did them on the 15th of October because that's when I have them down for. So we need to uh, get the October ones on the next next go around then. On the next. Oh, you want to do you want to do these next time instead of tonight? Well, we can do them, do them tonight, but they weren't on the agenda. No, well, we can do them next time. The, uh, I'll just procedure normally would be to wait till they've been put on the agenda. Okay. Those veterans can correct me if I'm wrong, no, right. but right. Okay. So. Uh, That's fine. I'll just yeah, if you make a let, note to let Barb know. Yeah. December. Oh, yeah. Third. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else for the finance meeting? It was uh, you, we also discussed the um, this finals on the summer food service program, which Mr. Woodworth would like to speak to. Well, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to hear, we, we will have a oh, report, okay. but in the WRCC, Dave he makes some comments, and then we'll okay. review uh, where it stands. Yes, we did review the... Uh, program and got a presentation from Tristan Johnson on it and uh, the other thing just as a informational uh, as you recall we made a change in, in banking a few months ago we approved a change in banking uh, over to merchants um, and uh, Jim reported that it actually went quite smoothly with uh, a minimum of glitches it's quite a quite a process to switch that that whole thing over and uh, it went went reasonably well there was a couple of small glitches but they worked them out so we're we're on the new new banking setup were we at people's we were at td 
and you save some money going to merchants. Yeah. Well, and and yeah, yeah. There, are, there are various reasons. We had a pretty good review of it at, at finance when it was proposed, and uh, um, you know that banks banks change and they become bigger and bigger. <coughs> merchants uh, have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a all Vermont centric yeah. bank. Uh, okay, I guess that's it for finance. Uh, planning and policy uh, has not met. We'll be, uh, we'll be in conflict with the budget meetings. <laughs> we will be meeting before the next board meeting. Next board meeting and there, if you notice ahead, looking ahead on unfinished business, there's some policies there, but we're going to have a, we're going to take care of that business to move them, or delay them when we get to unfinished business. Um, teacher curriculum has not met since our last meeting. Uh, yeah. uh, BAMS committee. Uh, BAMS committee met earlier this evening, um, and we got a really comprehensive review of the BAMS budget um, for and that that process and. Where things are at, so it's a really, it's a good conversation, I think, and a really good understanding of where the BAMS budget's at. Okay, Wait, can I ask you a question? Just going back to the um, the um, <clears throat> the warrants, is that I mean, I'm just looking at the old I mean, September 10th and October 15th, we already approved. I think on the agenda was November 5th. Is that what is? I mean, I'm holding a meeting day to day and it's the November 5th numbers. Is that, are those the numbers that you were um, giving or no? the, the payrolls I have. But these are, these oh. aren't payrolls, these were the, um, the, the warrants? The warrants, um, yeah. yeah warrants that's November what I have as November 5th. Yeah, I mean, that's what was, that was what was warranted. Yep. It's November 5th. Right, the, it's just the, pay, the, it's the, the payrolls. payrolls. Oh, the payrolls. Oh, okay. The payrolls. Okay. So. Yeah, the payrolls are, are September. Okay. Sorry. At some point, we're going to have to do two two weeks, or we're going to be caught up at the next meeting with the payroll. The payrolls. Well, uh, you able to get well we're they're they're usually about a month behind when they right. finally get get to us. You know. But uh, we want to make sure we don't skip October since it was assumed that they were being done tonight, and they aren't. So. Okay. So. Okay, uh, that it for dams. Okay, uh, WRCC committee did meet. Yes, we did, yeah. and we approved the one percent fund um, for just for three three, three teachers yeah. uh, working cooperatively on a. Yeah, that's right. Uh, um, Valiate has not. Sam Rowley. <laughs> yeah. And that was our primary business at the WRCC meeting. Yes, it was. And it was very uh, nice meeting. that's it for committee reports. Is there <coughs> anything else for consent agenda? Not motion to accept consent. So okay. moved. Sean, Laurie. Okay. Question. So, have we approved the um, the warrants for for of November fifth because they were on the agenda? That's what we're that's what we're voting to approve. We, right. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Okay. Any other questions? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Okay, got through that. All right, uh, let's move on to administrative reports and we'll go in the opposite direction. And we'll start with Wyndham Regional Career Center. We do have a topic to talk about um, there. Well, I've got a couple actually. Uh, today and tomorrow, and tomorrow uh, the WCAX program, which is sponsored by the UVM Extension Service, is uh, filming students today and tomorrow. Uh, these are students that help the Wyndham Farm and Food Network uh, package some bulk food for delivery to uh, 
local low income families through the through the organization, uh, and it, it's a, been a pretty good program. And they decided to come on down and, and take a look at what we're doing. So, you, if you are available at noon time, <coughs> watching WCX, which most of us don't, sometime I'm hearing in January that that show will be available to see us. So that is, is a big excitement. Is that show called Across the Fence? Across yeah. the Fence, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, we did meet with the Finance Committee. Uh, uh, about the Summer Food Program, uh, which we did view, view was successful. I'm handing out a sheet with the financial uh, information on it, and I can kind of give you a little summary of how we thought it went. And answer any questions. All right, um, you see here we ran at a, a slight loss, um, which was not anticipated. Uh, and then kind of going through, you know, we view the program as fairly successful. Uh, we did it as a, literally as a one-off, you know, kind of taking it up as we had talked to the finance committee about that. Uh, stepped into a, a position where uh, we had to take what was available within the community and look at it and, and organize it. We worked with uh, the Abbey Group, uh, which is a, um, a food service group that uh, serves several of the schools in the area to provide the uh, professional expertise. Uh, we had nine Career Center students employed through the Abbey Group uh, working on the food program. Uh, and Sue served around 21,000 meals as the summer went on. Um, perhaps the best summary is we think it was successful. Uh, we think that there is a need for the entire community to create a unified food effort for those that need food in this, within our community. Uh, right now it's kind of fragmented. And uh, from that fragmented fragmentation, it's, it's hard to uh, to put together a real good unified effort. Uh, we recommended to the Finance Committee that the school district support this type of program and that schools might participate in them in a variety of ways, but that the school system not act as the fiscal agent. Uh, it's really not set up to do it right. And, uh, and, and from that, we've, we're still continuing uh, with the planning of next year's program. Uh, the Career Center may or may not be involved, depending on how those plans work out. And uh, we're, we're, we're hoping as many of the local agencies as we can get involved will uh, help with that planning and, and help with next year's program. Questions? So originally we, we had hoped that it would come out to a break even. Um, it uh, didn't quite come out that way. And I, the Finance Committee unanimously felt and it was agreed upon by Dave and uh, the rest of the people in the program that um, we should not be the fiscal agent for it. However, there are definitely some opportunities in the program for our students, both employment and, and learning experience. And uh, as, as one of the players, we should be supportive of the, uh, of the program, but not, uh, not involved as the fiscal agents, so we will not be um, participating on the same basis next year, but we will uh, uh, look for ways to stay involved. As, as Dave said, it's pretty clear that this is, a, this is a big problem and a big challenge. It's an ever-growing one of all the, the kids in our area that are not, um, are, are not getting proper nutrition and there's a lot of people that should be involved in it, and there should be some sort of coordinated effort to, to make that happen. So yeah. we're ne we weren't quite sure that we we really reached the way the present system was organized, the the, the system we inherited and moved forward. Uh, we don't think we really reached maybe maybe half of the students that you would expect that we wanted to reach, just the way it's set up. If that needs some refinement, there's some yeah, I mean, it certainly is a 
you know, it's a big problem and it's uh, commendable to try to do things. I think because we are a district union, uh, in order to involve all five towns, um, you know, it's, uh, I think it's very important to make sure that the benefit uh, goes out to five towns somehow. I know it's a very, very, very difficult job. Uh, but, the, you know, the town, the problem doesn't stop at the borders of the town of Broward. Um, you know, it's all, all five member towns in the district need to have, need to be included. And I think in a lot of other places, this issue is addressed on a more uh, regional, regional basis yep. and coordinated that way, so. Um. So is, is the, the $11,000 the, uh, is, is our responsibility at this point because we were Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and the only, and, 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 and please don't try to think this is a justification. Well, I think but, it's. I think I mean for the this first, you know, we were. If I remember right, we were sort of pulled in because yeah. housing authority or somebody, you know, stepped they, out. They and, and this, out. Is, this was something that needed to be done. And, and but I'm just looking at at the future, which is yeah. what is looking at too. So well, no, that's fine. But you know, the other, you know, the positive things out of this, we employed nine kids this summer that wouldn't have had jobs. Uh, watching those kids grow from literally coming together without really knowing who they were and knowing how to work together and watching the kind of work they did uh, in preparing these meals and, uh, and getting them delivered and uh, getting the kitchen clean and keeping up with it. Uh, the folks from Abbey Group that we contracted with when we were done basically said that they would rather work with kids like that than many of the adults that they end up working with in some of the kitchens in the schools. So they, this was a real fine group of kids. Those kids took home about 10 grand this summer, which really ran through the Abbey Group payroll. So we took a lot of this money that, you know, was here, and we tried to return it back into the community. That was certainly yeah, thing. I know in the experience. Yeah. So, so was, was, was there something, I mean, you know, Sean was talking about, and you are talking about, you know, being able to reach more people. Is it, is it on the, the deficit? Is it due to a, a per meal basis you were losing something in every meal? Or was there something more structural that, that could be One, of, could one be of the things which the folks in the state of Vermont kept trying to tell us, you have to remember this is a very minimal program. It pays for minimal meals. And uh, there is a, a tendency, I think, in all communities, to try to get as much as you can out of those meals. And there's a tenant, we, we gave what we could get, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I don't think there's a tendency to overspend, but when you get 79 cents to reimburse a snack, it's really hard to, to not make money, but right. to break even. Right. Um, so that, that's difficult. Um, the other end of it, I think we ran into some startup costs we didn't uh, count on in order to make meals safely delivered. Uh, we, there was a series of coolers that we inherited from uh, Brown Borough Housing Authority, which we're holding here for the next entity. You know, hope they're, they're in our... In they're our, stacked up over right there. They're stacked, stacked up at the tick, yeah. So uh, we have a number of coolers now, but just a lot of little startup costs that yeah. you wouldn't anticipate, yeah. Right. It's a valuable program. And, it's a and, 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 and hugely valuable program that I that I'm sensing the community is beginning to wrap around on. You know, and then, and it just you know between Project Feed the Thousands and there's a, there's a, all sorts of entities out there trying to relate upon you know not solving but helping to aid folks that that need to have help with their meals, and uh, they don't work together. Is there somebody carrying the ball to make sure that it works next year? Right now, uh, we're working with Hunger Free Vermont and United Way primarily. And uh, I know uh, Boys and Girls Club is certainly showing an interest and they're stepping up. And, uh, and I, I know uh, those organizations are also trying to get other people involved. <coughs> Any other? Yeah, I just, got, I just got one piggyback on what Sean said. Before we started this program, that was my main concern. If we do run a deficit, which I thought we might, um, why should Guilford and Vernon and all these people be responsible for something that really didn't benefit them? And I don't know how you're going to rectify that. Somehow, this, this, this 11000 is going to be passed down to Vernon voters, and the, uh, Vernon taxpayers, rather. 
And all they got was goodwill out of it, I think. Yes. Yeah, I mean, um, some, you know, knowledge that there was an educational component that, again, not every town benefits from everything that happens educationally. And I guess we could theoretically try to proportion it out based on I don't know if there's the budget, but I, when the point is well taken, that <coughs> it wasn't. I don't know if there's an incident that's that <coughs> dramatic as favoring one town. I don't think I don't know if you could think of one. Well, I I get, yeah, I, I think my we don't know where the kids came from, and they come from all over our district. Uh, the way the summer food program runs. Uh, due to the fact of the, or the high volume of uh, low-income people that qualify for uh, free and reduced meals, uh, this area is obligated to serve any child under the age of 18 that steps forward. And I can assure you they came from all over. Where they came from? Don't know. But they well, did come from all over the And district. I can say too, I mean, that we're at the Boys and Girls Club where I work, we, we're one of those food service sites and we serve between 40 and 60 meals a day every day this summer. And a percentage of those kids are from Vernon or were from Guilford or were from Dummerston or Putney. The majority were from Brattleboro, but there was a percentage from the, the, the other four towns in the district as well that we were feeding because, because of the, the mandate that if they're under 18 years old and they show up, you feed them. And that's what we did. One of the ideas that we're actually trying to front is you can almost call it the ice cream truck kind of effect to kind of do this, but is you know, really one of the maps which we gets a little more detail that we presented to the finance committee. You know, the, is really the the vast majority of the families that might benefit from this are, are more into downtown and to the more of the southeastern town, and uh, those folks don't go to Memorial Park or some of the other sites that were being served. There's a transportation issue, you know. Um, so trying to get the meals to the right locations is very important. And I, and I don't think we began to reach that, that particular entity. We did reach out to uh, some of the other towns. Uh, and each of the towns has a slightly different uh, free and reduced lunch equation. You know, so did we serve those students? Yes, we did. You know, I think we did through the summer camps and the Memorial Park and Brownsboro Boys and Girls Clubs. I think we, we served quite a few of those kids that we're concerned about. Well, I, I think, um, you know, everybody probably has a unified feeling in that this was a good thing to do. I don't think there's any question about yeah. that. Um, is there another entity that will be um, forthcoming that anybody anticipates uh, um, for next year? I've heard several rumors at this moment. Uh, I've actually heard that uh, Brownsburg Housing Authority might be starting to step up. I know Boys and Girls Clubs is interested in it. And they did it the previous year, is that yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, the housing Authority. Yeah, Housing Authority. Yeah. So, uh, and, I, and the, the folks in the state of Vermont that are, uh, that really make those decisions are looking into all that now. We're working with them. You know, we don't mind being a partner in the whole thing. And, and the Finance Committee has said that's fine too. Uh, but uh, being the fiscal agent for it is, uh, it carries a certain amount of risk. There's no doubt about it. And yet you could still have the uh, involvement by the students that come from the, yes. the career center yeah. involved. So um, it would yeah. be That was really one of the, the high points of the whole summer is yeah. uh, being able to, to be involved in the program where we, we took a you know, good number of kids and, and yeah. kept them employed in a real gainful fashion. Yeah. And really, as a school, that's kind of what we got out of it. Not to say it's not valuable to do community outreach, but the educational part there is our job. But what really surprised me about these numbers, and wasn't what I've been expecting when we were hearing about this program, isn't how much we ended up having to pay in, but how little anybody else did. Um, you know, other than the big block from the state, we ended up putting more than any three of these other numbers combined. Without, it's an entitlement program. 
and people don't want to. There's a there are some difficulty getting other organizations to step up and help with this program. Well, but I look at how much this community gives to programs like Project Feed the Thousands, and just the sheer amount of charitable donations, and I'm just not sure why this program couldn't benefit from more community outreach and private donations. One of the organizations that we're now working with is Project Feed the Thousands to see if we can increase their awareness of how they might fit into that much more global approach to this problem. I think those, some of those regional organizations that do this kind of work do generate a fair amount of uh, charitable donations. And hopefully, however this gets set up, it will do the same thing. But it isn't, a, it isn't a, big, a big number, but it's growing. No, no, yeah, yeah. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Thank you, Dave. Okay, moving south. South is that direction. <laughs> I understand. Um, see, speaking of Feed the Thousands, we did kick off our annual holiday drive today. Um, we did it with a slightly different format where we did not do a whole school rally, but we did it by administrative house. Um, student council was very pleased with that. Uh, they felt it was more intimate and more meaningful to kids to do it in a group of 400 rather than a group of 870. Um, <clears throat> as part of that, we've br they're bringing back what we call Buzzano baskets, named after Melinda Buzzano, and uh, students that choose not to eat their fruit or milk um, at lunch, and there are those that do, we have baskets available where they can drop those off. <clears throat> and somebody comes from the drop-in center and picks those, picks those up every day. Uh, it was great. I was in the cafeteria at the end of lunch today, and three of the baskets were full of apples and, and some milk. So it was good to see that that food isn't just getting thrown away. Um, we also <clears throat> mailed home our report cards with a new format, and um, that new format has ways that um, teachers have now evaluated students on rubrics, um, covering everything from how they write, how they communicate, um, innovative practices in the classroom and civic and social expectations. So it's going to be interesting to see how that kind of plays out as, as parents get those in the next couple of days. And uh, we're kind of excited about the fact we can get more information. Um, Junior Oliver Pamazzi was granted an extension on his Marjo Foundation grant, which he got last year, studying invasive species in southern Vermont. Um, he's working with Matt Betts at the middle school as his mentor and he'll be presenting that work at a science fair this spring. Um, also, um, our environmental group, Preserve Our Planet, competed in an annual high school greening summit. And in their first year of competition, BUHS won first place in the written proposal category with their proposal to help reduce disposable water bottle usage here at BUHS. And they also edged out North Country Union High School in the Environmental Scholar Bowl to win top honors in that category as well. So. We're very proud of them. And Scott Noren, who is in charge of our um, Athletic Leadership Council, um, he and Megan McLaughlin, who's a counselor at Dummerston right now, they accompanied a group of students from BUHS to a statewide conference um, on athletic performance and sportsmanship, and that was great to see as well. And last but not least, Maya Stoller, who is an 11th grader, <clears throat> recently won a prize in a national photo contest uh, for her piece called Dark Room Gallery. So, um, and that's actually on display in our hallway right now. And then um, I have something from Central Office. Jim, we'll do that now. We're going to wait. Um, hey, no, I will go ahead. Okay, that's okay with the that next presenter. presenter. Um, Dr. Staley asked me to hand out all the remaining time. Yeah, you do. You take it anyways. Um, Dr. Staley asked me to hand out the school board's self-assessment survey um, that I guess we do annually. And everybody can fill one out and bring those to the next meeting. Um, they'll collect those from everybody. Everybody hear that? The instructions? I have two questions, if I yes. may. Would it be possible to, um, for the school board members to get a 
a dummy of the new report cards? Absolutely. Oh, no pun intended. We're not dummies. But, sure. Uh, <laughs> um, and just to see what what the format is, and it can be emailed. Sure, I can do. Um, that'd be great. I'd love to see that. And uh, second thing, um, I was just really interested in the invasive species um, program. Yes, he's. I know he's working in the West River. I'm not sure exactly which species he's investigating. Maybe but not. Maybe Japanese. Not. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, interesting. Well, I can check on Oliver. I see him every day. Yeah. I'll ask him more. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. That it for central office as well? Good yes. job. Thank you. Okay. We move on to dams. <laughs> My report is brief. Thank you to the BAMS committee for a long day, most of them today. Um, tonight is also our first BEAMS family night of the year. We have two each year, and uh, the timing is such that tonight celebrates the work our students did through BEAMS for the first uh, eight weeks of school, and uh, also uh, showcases the upcoming clubs and activities that begin next week. Um, included in tonight's um, evening was a theatrical production that one of the Beams clubs uh, put on. It was very cute. I had to leave it midway to come to my meeting, but um, it's very cute. And uh, one of our other clubs, the International Cooking Club, made the food for tonight's event, uh, dinner for the families and students who showed up. And they did a wonderful job on that. So um, it was going very well when I left. Uh, we have a music department uh, daytime assembly on the 29th. It's a week from Thanksgiving Day at 2 o'clock. Uh, everyone's welcome. And an evening concert as well at 7 p.m. that night. It's our fall concert of the year. Twelve of our eighth graders were recently the recipients of the Mount Snow Aiming for Excellence Award, which is given out each year to uh, the eighth graders who demonstrated um, exceptional achievement in their seventh grade year. The criteria is based on minimally three out of four marking periods in grade seven. And we had 12 students last Friday we had a little um, award ceremony invited the parents of those students to come we didn't tell the kids um, that we invited the parents we didn't tell the kids they were being invited it was a surprise to them too it was very nice um, I uh, as part of our beams program as well uh, several of our students went to a robotics competition in Nashua two weekends ago. First time ever of uh, us sending a group of students to a robotics competition. They built and programmed a robot and they brought home a trophy. They were very proud of themselves. Um, I wasn't supposed to know that this occurred, but Betsy was so excited she had to tell me. But the kids themselves wanted to share it with me and so I was sitting in my office uh, last week and at my computer and if you know my office my back is sort of to the door when I'm at my computer and I heard this sound I didn't know what it was so I ignored it at first it just didn't register and then I heard it again I realized that's not a typical sound around these parts so I looked and there was the robot making its way into my office and the kids were hiding in the outer office behind it. They had programmed it to find its way into my office. It was the cutest thing. And they followed it in and showed me their trophy, which will now be in our trophy case downstairs with all the athletic trophies that are down there. Uh, but it was the cutest thing. and They were very proud of themselves. And they were demonstrating that this evening, too, as part of the Beams family night. And lastly, um, I had the occasion to speak with um, two Guilford parents over the weekend whom I know personally. They are parents of fifth graders. 
So their children would not be coming to BAMS next year should it happen, but a year after that they would be. And they were um, quite interested in having a conversation and we spoke at length and I invited them to come visit and I think they will. But I, you know, I let them know, and I'm saying this publicly, that if there are Guilford parents, community members who would like to come and visit, um, I'd be happy to host those visits for individuals or groups of uh, community members um, and help people gather. It'd be a fact-finding visit for them and just gather information as they make their decision. So, happy to do that. That's it. Thank you, Ingrid. Uh, board chair report. Uh, the only thing I have to mention is that uh, I've been invited to attend the town finance committee meeting next week, and as has uh, Margaret Atkinson, chair of the town board. We've been invited to uh, visit with them about our what we're up to and what our plans are, and uh, we are, of uh, course, taking Jim Kane along with us that uh, we can provide the answers to the questions that may come up, but we're looking forward to that opportunity to discuss um, our programs and uh, plans with the Town Finance Committee a little bit. Um, I believe that's it for reports. And the next item is unfinished business. And item A is policy review. Um, because planning and policy hasn't had a chance to meet to review these, I would like to move that we uh, table second reading <coughs> for uh, those policies until the next meeting. It should be the first December meeting on December 3rd, correct? Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions. Okay, we will we will take them up at the the next meeting. There is no budget meeting just prior to the next board meeting, so you should be able to hold your PC meeting. Lori? I have a question on procedure. So if the policy committee meets and discusses these policies right before the meeting. What's the next step? They make a recommendation to the board to either adopt or change or take. Well, this is just second reading, not adoption. Okay. We have one more final step to adopt. Right. So we would then present our discussions to the board as a whole. The board could then give their feedback. And then we have still have that whole next step and could have more discussion if we wanted before actually adopting them. Okay. And committed. Any board member who saw that that's not part of planning and policy, if they have thoughts, concerns, issues, questions, they could get them to us, like maybe electronically, before we have our discussion. So we have that, that input as well when we're making when we're having our discussion at the planning and policy. Or of course, they're welcome to come to the oh, planning and policy. Welcome to the meeting too. And it's currently just the two of you. I think so. Yeah. And Ruth. And Ruth. Me. Me. No. Policy. Okay. You, you volunteered to step you in. Were last, uh, you were volunteered last. You were volunteered. Oh, okay, okay. It just <laughs> include me in your emails. Include me in your emails. I will come. Did I mishear you? I thought you said. No, I, you know, that was a long time ago. You volunteer ago. anytime there's a need, you volunteer. So. Yeah, I, that was a long time ago. I've had a lot of budget meetings between then and now. <laughs> okay. So, let's see, what else do we have? I don't have anything else. Um, I got a question, Bob. Yeah. Do we have an attendance policy at all for board members? Uh, or do you think we should talk about it, or? Yes, well, there is. Um, there's a, a, according to Ron, there's a, a statute that, uh, and I've never personally, I don't think we've experienced this since I can remember, but, um, there are, if, if somebody misses three meetings in a row, then um, there's some action that needs to be taken. Um, <coughs> without <coughs> uh, 
saying too much, I guess I could say that I have, uh, there's been a couple of situations where I have made comments and made communications about coming to meetings. Uh, but uh, there, I mean, we are, we are, we're all elected by our constituents to attend and not everybody can make everything, but uh, um, it's, it's important that people do make the meetings. When I first got on the board at the, uh, in the town report that went in February, it actually showed the attendance record of all the board members. Mm -hmm. And then shortly after that, they dropped that. They dropped them. <laughs> yeah, I, think I, I don't I know if that's something that valuable back. to have or, or why it was dropped, I'm really not sure. But. That was in the Guilford Town report. No, no, or in, in, the, or in, in the uh, in annual report the, for the yeah, yeah. The yeah. annual okay. report. In other words, the attendance for all of these meetings was reported in the annual. Yeah, report which is relatively easy to do. It's, yeah, it's all right yeah. there. That's a good. That's a good point. So the, the town question is to why town members. Was, yeah, I don't know why it was dropped, uh, but the town members then would be aware of the fact. How many times their representative right. was yeah. present? Right. Along the same line, is there a requirement for committee work? I know we have several committees. A lot of our work is done in committees. Um, not officially. We we've, we've always tried to uh, spread the spread the load around, um, and normally most people are on two committees, um, and some are on occasionally. more. <laughs> some are on more. Um, uh, I don't, there's no official, you know, you shall be on two committees or no more than three or four, whatever, but we hope everybody will um, pull their weight on a couple of committees and um, we, we try to honor people's wishes in terms of what they want to be on. I mean, uh, sometimes there are situations where you just kind of, you kind of divide it up a little bit and not everybody can be on the same same committee, but it's generally we've been able to keep everybody, you know, on something that's appropriate <coughs> for them, and, and they they, they want to be a part of. Them. So, but there is no official minimum committee requirement. Well, when we went to a nine-member board. That that was one of the um, things that was looked at was that the, each board member would have more committee work to do because there were less board members. But I think we also cut down on the number of committees, combined some committees together like planning and policy and teacher curriculum committee. I think those used to be separate. There was a teacher committee and a curriculum committee and a planning committee and a policy committee. And, and they kind of combined them so that you didn't have as many committees, but. And we used to have building and grounds. Yeah, we used to have building and grounds, but finance. now that's part of finance. Yeah. So, um, it, and it's worked out. It's worked out. I'll, I'll find out about that. that I don't know there. if it has yeah. value or, no. or but, you know, whatever it was. Yeah. I, I think people of the various towns are entitled to know if they're, yeah. if they, you know, without having to watch BC, as wonderful as <coughs> BC TV is, not having to watch it every time to see if your representative is. And it's, it's, it's not available, but I mean, we can't get it at my house. So you can't watch to see if you were there? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, haven't, they haven't put it on the satellite. Oh, man. I don't know why. <laughs> Russ, did you have a... Yeah, I had something um, different. By the way, I mean, yeah, I think in the Bradford Town meeting, there is now something in the annual report of what the attendance of, of the people at the town meeting. Um, I was just going to say, the, um, the SU Finance Committee, um, we're, we've been meeting weekly, uh, that we're, we're skipping tomorrow, but next Wednesday, we're going to go over the final budget that we'll present. I 
two weeks later to the full SU board. So if anybody's interested in coming to that meeting, it's at 5.15 at Central Office. So we'll be, um, you know, we've had presentations from all the different, uh, different groups. And uh, so we should have some final numbers and, and decisions of recommendation then. So if anybody's interested. Okay. Anything else under unfinished business? Anything else under new business? There <coughs> will be, I will ask for a motion for executive session. We do have a short executive session. I move we go into executive session to for, discuss for a, a personnel matter. For a personnel matter, yes. I second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, no, not we're in executive session.